Russian military personnel are being forced to desert if they wish to leave the army after their contracts expire, according to the National Resistance Center of Ukraine. The National Resistance Center learned from residents of temporarily occupied areas in Ukraine that Russian soldiers are compelled to desert to exit the military as the Russian command does not release them upon contract completion. Most deserters are those who were not released upon completion of their contracts and were planned to be sent to a meat assault, the National Resistance Center states. Currently, Russian forces have increased the number of units searching for deserters. Additionally, in Ukraine, territories under occupation, the enemy has intensified the establishment of checkpoints. After being apprehended, fugitives are usually thrown back to the front line under wartime laws, the National Resistance Center added. At the end of the report, the National Resistance Center urged individuals to report the locations of the Russian troops' bases to terminate the Russian contracts prematurely. As reported earlier, Russia has come up with a new way to replenish its army with people from the occupied territories. In particular, detainees facing imprisonment are offered to sign a contract with the Russian army in exchange for avoiding criminal prosecution. In this way, the Kremlin hopes to delay the announcement of mass mobilization. Around 190,000 recruits have signed contracts to join the Russian military so far in 2024, former President Dmitry Medvedev said recently. Medvedev, who is deputy chairman of Russia's Security Council, said the current average recruitment rate was about 1,000 people a day. Russia is encouraging people to sign up for the war in Ukraine by paying them well above average wages. President Vladimir Putin has said Moscow has no need to enforce a new round of compulsory mobilization because so many men are signing up on voluntary contracts. Recall Russia has forced thousands of migrant workers and foreign students to join the Russian army to fight against Ukraine. These individuals were reportedly told that their visas would no longer be renewed if they refused to serve. Activists from the Russian human rights organization Idait Lesom are helping soldiers to escape, primarily Russians and Ukrainians forcibly conscripted in Russian-occupied areas. However, they also provide assistance to citizens of other countries. An important component of the Ukrainian success during the Kursk operation was the use of electronic warfare and reconnaissance systems which blinded the Russians and at the same time gave the Ukrainians a lot of useful intelligence information. This was stated in an interview with Der Spiegel by Thomas Withington, an expert from the British Royal United Services Institute. According to him, the methods and technologies of electronic warfare and intelligence are perhaps the most secret part of the Russian-Ukrainian war. In addition, this equipment rarely gets into the camera lens, unlike tanks or infantry fighting vehicles, so it remains out of the public eye. Meanwhile, this is one of the most important elements of the current war. Ukraine has a mix of domestic and foreign systems. Both are very effective. The Ukrainians are also very strong in software and algorithms, which has contributed to their success in the electromagnetic spectrum. They are very good at identifying how Russia uses electromagnetic technologies. They have brilliant programmers who figure out how Russia uses these systems and then develop ways to disrupt them. The expert explains, According to him, as a result, the Russians are losing the ability not only to direct artillery using drones, but also generally lose situational awareness. Simply put, the enemy no longer understands what is happening on the battlefield. In addition to jamming enemy communications and radar, it is also a means of reconnaissance. As Whittington explains, to find out where an enemy soldier or vehicle is, it is enough to track the enemy's communications. You don't even need to decipher what Russian soldiers are saying. You just need to determine whether there is a transmission. This allows you to find out how many soldiers or vehicles are involved, but they can also decipher what they are saying and thus gather information about what is happening on the battlefield. The expert says, Whittington emphasizes that Russian electronic warfare systems are generally performing worse than they are presented and represented. The operation in Kursk therefore speaks in favor of the strength of the Ukrainians, but also shows the inability of the Russians in the electromagnetic spectrum.
they should have responded within a few days. Their failure raises serious questions, since in some places Russia is conducting very successful electronic warfare and in others it suffers a blatant defeat, he says.